All right, we do have breaking news. The House Judiciary Committee has just announced that it will vote on Wednesday to authorize subpoenas to get the entire unredacted Mueller report. Attorney General William Barr has said that he planned to release a redacted copy by mid-April or sooner. But top Democrats are demanding the full report without any redactions, and they want to see it. The deadline they have set is tomorrow. Manu Raju on the Hill with the latest developments. I mean, it's a whole argument here between, you know, the, the ranking Republican and, and Chairman Nadler about the legality of all of this and what happens and, you know, saying this is an arbitrary deadline tomorrow or not. So what changes this morning with this announcement? Well, the Democrats are escalating this fight, something that could potentially end up in court if the Justice Department resists. The Democrats are concerned in particular about the number of redactions, the categories of redactions that Bill Barr, the attorney general, said that he would seek as part of his review process for the full model report. In particular, they're concerned about two out of the four. Uh, the two involve grand jury information that Bill Barr said that would be ultimately redacted, as well as information that could impugn the care of what Barr says are peripheral, peripheral third parties. Those two rather broad areas uh, Democrats are concerned could lead to a whole host of redactions in which the public and Congress itself would not be able to see the full Mueller report. Now, Democrats have been saying that precedent is on their side. They argue that in cases like in the Ken Starr investigation into Bill Clinton, as well as the Watergate investigation, grand jury information in particular was made available to the House Judiciary Committee. So the committee says it is entitled to this as well. So that's why on Wednesday you will see the committee vote to authorize subpoenas for the full Mueller report, the underlying evidence, in addition to five White House officials, former White House officials, whom the committee says has essentially waived executive privilege because of the cooperation between those officials and the special counsel. So a really escalating of this fight, as you said, Republicans think this is arbitrary. It could force Bill Barr to essentially break regulations to release the full report. But nevertheless, this is the next step Democrats are, fa are, are moving forward on, Poppy, teeing up a rather significant fight with huge implications. Poppy. Really interesting. Uh, well, next hour, we're going to have on one of the prosecutors who worked on Ken Starr's team. So we'll ask him all about this. Manu, thanks very much. Jim. Susan Hennessy joins us now. She's a former NSA attorney as well as CNN national security and legal analyst. Uh, so, so first question to you, very simple one. They issue these subpoenas. Do those five targets have to abide by those subpoenas? Well, so it's like, it depends on who they're going to issue the subpoenas mm -hmm. to. It's likely that they'll actually issue them to the Justice Department. Mm -hmm. Now, the committee will vote to issue that subpoena. The Justice Department is going to have some period of time to decide how to respond. If mm -hmm. they decline to respond or don't respond by, the, by sort mm -hmm. of the deadline proposed, then the issue would be litigated. And that's why this is a little bit of an empty threat, in part because Barr has said that he intends to produce right. the report by mid-April. So by the time we sort of resolved all the legal issues related yeah. to the subpoena to actually compel the material, that deadline would have already but, passed. But the real question is less the timing, because whether it comes out tomorrow or two weeks from now, the, the point is how much comes out, right? And, and Barr has set this standard of saying, yeah, I'll release it, but I don't want to, in effect, sully the reputations of anybody who hasn't been charged by releasing evidence of possible wrongdoing by them that was decided was not prosecutable. I mean, that, that's the key here, right? And, and who wins that battle? Right, so it, there's a huge range of sort of discretion here. So on two categories, 6E material, that's grand jury material, and classified information, uh, Barr doesn't have a lot of discretion there. It's actually a felony for the Justice Department to release 6E material without getting the permission of a court. So the same for classified hmm. material. Okay. But it's those other categories, those categories especially uh, related to not wanting to, uh, to disclose information about peripheral third parties. Mm -hmm. The devil is really in the details there. If we're talking about limited redactions of people who are really just witnesses, people who were interviewed but have nothing to do with this, yeah. uh, or, or sort of limited redactions in the sense of people's names being removed, maybe replaced with things like individual one, individual right. two, as we've seen in other cases, there will be less objection. So if, the key question is, right, the, Robert Mueller said, according to Barr's summary, that he found evidence that the president obstructed justice, could not make a decision as to whether that's prosecutor prosecutable, left it to Barr, Barr decided not to prosecute. So there is evidence in his longer report, apparently, that the president obstructed justice. 
Will we see that evidence? Or is that something that Barr can make the case and say, well, he didn't charge him. I don't want to sully the reputation of the president. I think that is evidence that Congress will ultimately see. And that's part of the question, whether or not Mueller actually intended for Barr to come in and make this determination yeah. regarding the prosecution, or whether or not he essentially wanted that to go over to Congress, mm -hmm. lay out the evidence on both sides, lay out the legal arguments and hand that over. Uh, so that certainly is an area in which Barr might assert executive privilege. Right. The, the obstruction conduct all occurs after the president uh, comes into office. That said, those are the kinds of things that if Barr uh, attempts to withhold that, Congress is really right. going to fight for and it. And then you also have that, that uh, presumably, I mean, well, there are some indications that he also found evidence of cooperation or just questions at least because there was a legalistic kind of phrase of did not establish conspiracy which may mean that he found some evidence. Is that evidence that would likely be seen if the port is comes out? Right, so uh, we don't know. This, mm -hmm. uh, this bar summary uh, could be describing a report that more or less exonerates the president, did not establish because mm -hmm. there's nothing at all, right. or did not establish could mean it just meets right below that criminal threshold. And so right. we have no idea, based on Bill Barr's mm -hmm. letter, what the range of that information is. And that's why I think we're going to see really tremendous yeah. pressure from Congress to get every last yep. detail of this report, because otherwise the questions just won't be and, answered. And then the big question will be, you know, is the narrative that the report was a dud based on that bar summary, is that true? Or is there more information in there? Uh, and there may be a different judgment afterwards. S Susan Hennessy, thanks very much. Thank